I like going to the bougie areas, but then I'll go to the hood. So it's like, I think that's just me as a person. I don't like being the same. And yeah, I think you can see that through my visuals. Cause I'm always trying something different. I always want to be different. I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money, that's a stick up. Today, I'm on my way to meet London-based director Ashley Jade. Ashley started out with a BTEC in media and later applied herself to exploring photography and film, distinguishing herself in the media by working with the House of CB and H&M in 2018 directing campaigns, and expanded her directorial catalogue by working with names like James Morrison, Joss Stone and Roddy Rick. Now as an accomplished director releasing short films and documentaries, Ashley likes to assist youths aspiring to be in her position. Today I'll be exploring the experience Ashley has gained after years of working in the media and whether the industry has taken to her as a woman of colour working in a predominantly male environment. How's everything been recently? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, I'm great. Yeah. I'm glad to have a moment to sit down with you and have a conversation about everything. Mm -hmm. Like, just get to know your story, really, um, and to the point that you you are today, like, how you got there. So, yeah. so you grew up in New Newham, didn't you? Yeah, well, yeah. before I got to Newham, I actually grew up in Essex. Oh, okay. Yeah, deep Essex, and then I moved to Newham when I was 15. Mm -hmm. How do you think that, like, shaped you? Uh, it definitely shaped a lot of me because, mm -hmm. you know, I went from living in the countryside to now I was like an inner city kid. Um, and it's at that age when you're 15, it's like, it's quite a prime time, isn't it? So uh, I think it definitely shaped me. It shaped what I would say inspires my work and stuff. But I was always kind of in and out of London as a kid because my dad was from London. Um, and I started to go to London a lot when I was like, 13 but I wouldn't tell my mom be like yeah I'm just going out to play jump on the tra train go up to like Stratford go to the hair shops and stuff so I was always in and out of London anyway mm -hmm. and um what, what else do you think kind of inspires your work hmm I feel like it's just my life really a lot of my work is just inspired by what's around me um and just things that I enjoy mm -hmm. so it just depends on what the project is now you'll start to see my works shaping a bit differently. Um, that's because me as a person, I'm growing into different interests and stuff, and my visuals are starting to show that as well. And have you like, always aspired to be a director, or did you have completely different aspirations when you were younger? Uh, do you know, when I was young, I used to say it, because I used to watch MTV making a video, mm -hmm. and they used to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that when I'm older, because I really liked it. I was like, I want to make music videos. Um, and I was obsessed with music videos as a kid. But then when I got older, when I got to around, I don't know, probably like my early teenager years, just completely forgot about it. And I was kind of just living life. And it wasn't until I was at college and I found photography, then I started to get back to finding that call in. Mm -hmm. And so you went from um, being a photographer for the London Music Artists to now you doing some like documentaries and short films, right? Mm. So how did you find that transition? Uh, it was quite natural, to be fair. One thing about me as a director, I don't like being like pigeonholed into one thing. So I never, like people never know what to expect next from me. And I like keeping it that way. It's like that element of like surprise. Um, so it was quite natural. And sometimes it would literally just be me asking a friend or telling a friend that I want to do this. And then all of a sudden that opportunity would just come to me and it's in a, something completely different. It's not music videos. It might be um, just social media content or like campaigns for like brands and stuff. So it happened really naturally. There's a lot of people that I'm around, especially like in my world, it's like, we're all trying to make something out of nothing. So when you connect with people that just want to create, it's like naturally you guys just start creating different types of content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, the H&M uh, promotional video you did. Yeah. Uh, did you, would you say that like you had a direction, like a clear direction, or were you quite open to how it was going to turn out? No, with that one, everything was kind of already done. Yeah. I just had to turn up on the day and make sure that 
I got what the client wanted. Mm -hmm. So that one, uh, they were shooting the actual commercial and then I was just doing the social stuff. Mm -hmm. So all the lighting, the sets, the art direction, styling, everything was already done for me, which was something that I wasn't used to because you know, you're know you quite used to just doing a bit of everything. Um, the way that I've come up is very much on the director, the videographer, the editor, the producer, the runner, and everything in one. So when I went on that set and they were just like, no, you don't have to get your own drink, we'll do it. I was like, what? This is different. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting just to focus on the visual and that was it. And which aspect do you like the most of directing? Mm, I feel like I like all of it, but my favorite part is when you get to the color grade at the end. So it's like when you go and add in all the colors, because when we shoot an image, we shoot it flat. So there's like not much color to it. It's quite desaturated. And then when you do your color grade, it's like that finishing touch. You're so used to seeing it desaturated that when you put the colors in, it just enhances everything. And then you realize how beautiful it is. Mm. I'd say that's my favorite part. That sounds like a nice part. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. And you go to like, uh, you can go to like, um, the, the colorists, their suites and stuff. And it's like being in a huge living room with like loads of different TVs, like really low light. And then you get your food delivered and you're just chilling and just watching it in the dark. And it's like, it's a nice vibe. And they always have good playlists. So it's a vibe. Sounds good. And um, as a woman in like a predominantly male um, environment working as a director, how mm -hmm. do you feel um, during a career? Uh, do you know what? It was... It was a little bit more tougher at the beginning when no one really knew who I was. When I was like a runner or production assistant, uh, that's when I, I would feel, you know, there was a lot of like, there was just moments I would feel like, oh, okay, they wouldn't talk to a boy like that. You have the moments, but now that I'm more established, it's like a lot more, what am I trying to say? Now that I'm established. Yeah, now that I'm established, it's just you have the respect of your team. That's one thing that I make sure and I tell other women, make sure that your team respect you because that's really important. If you don't have a team that respects you, it's just going to, like, the the whole crew, everyone, one person doesn't respect you, you know, it's slowly the whole crew is going to try and, like, challenge you. Mm -hmm. So you want to always make sure that you've got a crew that respects you and um, has your best interest at heart, you know, especially the guys that will they know that, okay, she's the boss and they're, they're happy with that. Um, Cause some guys, they, they don't like it. So yeah, you get like a couple egos here and there, but most of them, yeah, I haven't had that since being a director. All my crew, they're really chilled. The guys are lovely, but I like to balance it out. I don't like to just have all females. I don't, I don't really like that. I like to just make sure that I've got a healthy balance of different sexes, different races, different ages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you feel like, would you say you're quite empowered as a woman in the industry after like generations of women that have like fought for that kind of position that you're in? And yeah. Uh, yeah, would you, would you say your um, gender or race, like in general in your career path would make a difference to where you go? Yeah, definitely. Though, you know, in a good way and a bad way, you know, sometimes you won't, I could see certain things would get, certain briefs will be directed to me because I'm the black girl. Oh, rappers give it to Ashley, you know, which was annoying because I knew I could do more than just shoot rappers. Um, and even with the rappers, sometimes they didn't want to do the ideas that I had, which were more like artistic and stuff because they just wasn't ready for that. Um, but then other times, you know, like now, there's since like, you know, the whole Black Lives Matters uh, that was happening all last year, people are more conscious that they have to look for different people in different worlds and stuff. So I've had a lot more opportunities being brought to me because of that. So that's the pros and the cons of it, really. Um, but yeah. Uh, do you think the media has changed since when you started out to now, like, just in general? Mm, yeah, definitely. I think... I think lockdown showed us how important content is. And I feel like it, it, it got content creators a bit more respect because we saw what happened when you can't go out and create. Everyone was just like losing their mind. Like, what are we gonna do? Um, and then the fact that we had to adapt so quickly to still being able to make brands, 
campaigns and stuff come to light and artists, their music videos, but we couldn't really go outside as much, was very limited. Um, so media has definitely changed, even with budgets and stuff. You know, I do a lot of mentoring and I can see what the younger generation can do with smaller cameras. And like, you know, if you was to bring what they've done and their budget to some of the bigger directors, they wouldn't have a clue how to do it. So media is definitely changing, definitely. And um, how is your mentoring going? Are you enjoying doing that? Yeah, I love my mentoring. Love it. I think it's one of the best decisions I ever made just because it, they teach me so much as well. So as much as I'm teaching them, they're teaching me so much about like what's going on through their eyes, how they're seeing the world. Um, yeah, it's really interesting talking to like different generations and just giving them advice and watching them to go, go and do it and then seeing where that gets them. They're all starting to, a lot of them are like a year in with me now. So I've seen the dramatic change like in their career, in their confidence as a person. So yeah, it's really beautiful to watch. That's nice. And like, what, what would you say the main reason for starting it in the first place was? Um, do you know what? I actually just started it just because we was in lockdown and I was thinking, what can I do? Mm. I was like, I can't go out and shoot. In the first lockdown, we wasn't even allowed to like go out. Um, so I was just thinking, I still need to make a little bit of income and mentoring might be cool. I was toying with the idea for quite, for like a month. I was thinking, people gonna pay me to talk to them? I don't know. And I was thinking, oh, let me try it. And then when I did the first session, I just knew straight away, I was like, yeah, no, I'm gonna do this. Because it was like, I can't explain the feeling afterwards, but it was like joy in a way. Like I just felt so happy, like seeing, their faces light up when you tell them a little piece of information, which to you is just normal. You know, it's like, yeah, you just know this because you've been doing something for so long. It's just natural to you. But when you give that information to someone else and see how that like affects their their world, it's like, yeah, it's beautiful to see. Mm. Do you think you had some good uh, mentors yourself when you started? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Yeah, I've had a couple mentors throughout my journey and especially when I look back now, there was a lot of guys and I had like maybe one or two women as well, but they helped me so much, like teaching me things. And it's like, I got to places quicker because of that. I didn't have to go and experience every single thing. Cause it's like, when you have a mentor, it's kind of, they're giving you their blueprint that they've already done. So then you can look at it and figure out, okay, cool. What can I do now to like make my own blueprint, but still follow those, theirs already. Um, so yeah, no, it definitely does help having a mentor. They help you kind of get through stuff in a quicker time to get to your end goal. Yeah. And what's like the big goal for you in the future? Oh my God. <laughs> I want to buy an island and I want to make like a retreat on it. That's like my big, big goal. That's the main one. So it's like mentor, that's like my mentor and big goal, like buy an island and have like a retreat on there for families, not just for kids and stuff. Like I feel like, yeah, that would be really cool to just reprogram people, you know, and help them achieve what they want. And then they can just chill in the sun while they do it. They eat vegan food. <laughs> That's the vibe. And um, how, how do you deal with like fear? Hmm. When something scares me, I know that I should do it. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I, I always feel a bit nervous, like, oh, should I do this? I'm not sure. But then when I, when I do question myself like that, that's when I know I should do it. So I kind of look at fear as a kind of motivating in a way. I'm like, okay, if I'm scared to do something, that means it's going to change or impact me uh, and change me as a person. It's going to make me grow. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. It's kind of a positive look at it now. What else do you think kind of spurs you on to be the most successful you could be? Now, having my mentees, because it's like, I have to keep delivering for them. I want to still, I want to always be like that inspiration that they first saw me as. So that's one of the, the main things. And um, yeah, I guess just for people. So when they look at me, they're like, wow, she did that, I can do it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's one of the main things, yeah. Obviously, friends and family are like, I've always been really supportive for you to like, get into the media. 
Yeah, I mean, family, they didn't really understand at first. They didn't they didn't know what was going on. When there's no money involved, family don't understand. <laughs> they're never like, they're like, so did you make any money? No, not yet, but I will. But now I think when I did the H&M campaign, that's when, that's when they started to realize, they was like, oh, wow, because they could physically see something that I did. And then last year when I was on Krypton Conan's rap game, uh, that's, I think they, they had the moment. It was like, oh my God. You know, because even now they have like people say, oh, I saw your daughter, I saw your granddaughter on TV. So now they're like, oh, wow, now they get it. But yeah, it was, it took time. But you have to put the work in, otherwise people won't, they won't understand, will they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, what do you think your proudest moment is? My proudest moment? Um, hmm. I think one of my proudest moments was, I would say it is like the H&M and it was the um, doing the, the, the rap game because it's like, you already knew, like I already knew that this was all gonna happen, but then now having other people be able to see it, it's like a proud moment. Like, yeah, I said I was gonna do this and now everyone else can see what I've been thinking and visualizing for years. So I'd say stuff like that, those type of moments and, um, yeah, anything where it's like other people can see what you've been seeing, those moments make me proud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like when you started getting into the industry, would you say it was quite smooth sailing or did you have a lot of bumps along the road? And if so, what kind of things um, would you say? It was just, it just took time. It was just being consistent. So it was like, there was moments, you know, when you first start out and like you're not making no money and like you're just go to a shoot, go home edit photos, edit videos, upload, go back out. Like that was literally my life for years. Didn't really, I never went on holiday. Like when I was younger, I didn't do like the holidays with my friends and stuff. Um, just little things like that, going out and all of that, sacrificed it all. But yeah, it, it was tough. Cause at that age you want to go out and you want to be having fun and like, you want to go buy the latest trainers and stuff like that. But I just couldn't cause I kept reinvesting everything into kit. Um, into travel, you know, because uh, I used to like to go to like America and stuff because I've been I've been going back and forth to America to like build a network out there. So literally I would always reinvest back into like my career. So it was tough at the beginning because it's like a mental thing. You have to get over that mental, um, I don't know what it is. Like it's not really a block, but you have to make that decision. This is what we're doing for the next five to 10 years. But after that, it will automate, it will all make sense eventually. Um, and then, yeah, I would say that now it's a bit more smoother, but it still, it still has its times because I'm not satisfied anymore. The, who I, who I wanted to be 10 years ago, I am. So now I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I want to be someone else now because I've already achieved it. I think that's like the blessing and the curse of being ambitious. You're always never satisfied. Yeah, keep pushing yourself. Yeah, you're always going to keep challenging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. When do you think that you started to, like, open up, like, open your shell a bit more from when you said you were? Um, I think when I started to... When I started to be a director, so when I transitioned from being a videographer to a director, and I just saw that that required so much of me, you have every single person asking you, what do you want for this? What do you want for that? Who do you want for this? Da, 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 da. And it just made me realize, oh my God, I have to be confident in this role. I can't like be like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Like you have to know. Um, so as time went on and the more shoots I started to do, naturally I just started to grow and become more confident. But it definitely helped doing all the videography and the editing um, on the come up because if someone said, oh, you can't do that, I'd be like, you can, I can do that. Because I knew how to do everything. So I had a different confidence in me. How long do you think it took you um, to learn most of the skills that you know now? Ooh. I mean, I've been doing this for like 10 years. So pretty much the whole 10 years. Because mm -hmm. when you start photography, that was like a whole journey. Then it went into videography and then that led into editing um, and then production and then directing. So it's like each thing had a certain amount of years to, to it. 
because even now sometimes I'll I might edit something and I might not know how to do something so I quickly just go on to YouTube how to do this da 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 I don't really edit that much but if I need to and then I'm like oh I've learned something now you know so it's like constantly learning I don't think that will ever stop and for like people that um, are unfamiliar with your work what would you say makes you you and like what you put into your directing is mm. What makes me me? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. What does make me me? My style is just very British and London. I love to show like London and like my view of it and how I see it. So um, I would say that's one thing that definitely makes my stuff me. Um, in one of my videos recently, I, I started it in the blocks in London, like in an estate in South London. But then we ended up by the the ocean. And I felt like even though there was a story to it through dance, it was also also a story of me because it showed where I've come from. And then it showed like the rebirth of a new director and a new person. So yeah, now I feel like my visuals are about to change. So I don't really know. Yeah, how do you see you're getting kind of different style as you get more into it. Yeah, and I've noticed I'm starting to work a lot more with women, which I love. Um, Cause I always wanted to work with women, but there weren't that many females around when I first started out. Um, so now it's like, yeah, I'm working with more women on camera and not just artists. It's like branded content or like short films. So that's really interesting, working with women. It's, it's a whole, it's different. And it, it's interesting because you're a woman, you see things differently. Um, and I feel like we need more stories told from a woman's perspective. Mm. Why do you think it's different? Kevin? There's just a different energy. Like when you're around your friends, like a bunch of girls, the energy is so different compared to when you're like with a guy. Um, it's kind of like healing in a way, you know? So when you have like a, a bunch of women creating an idea and it's about women, it just connects different. Mm. And what, um, what like piece do you think you're most connected to um, that you've done? So mm. I think it is one of my newer pieces, which was for a band called Sons of Kemet, featuring Koji, Koji Radical. Um, it was called Hustle. I feel like that, that one's the one that I'm connected to the most because it's the one that I was just saying that I feel like represents represents me as a director. So yeah, it was like different. And everyone was like, whoa, this is really R.E. Ash. Like what happened? I was like, I don't know. This is what happens when I'm in lockdown and I'm just sitting there thinking about things. So yeah, that was what was birthed from it. And uh, who would you say Ashley Jade is? Who is Ashley Jade? I don't know, she's just, she's just a, I don't know. I don't know how to explain who she is. Um, who is she? Okay, wait, I have to think about this. This is a good question. I feel like Jay-Z, you know, when Jay-Z gave that answer, he was like, some, some really good art, some really good um, answer. And then he was like, oh, you wanna know who Jay-Z is? Uh, who is Ashley Jade? I would say, there's different parts to who she is. It's like, you have the director, because I'm different, this is the thing with me, I'm very like, as a person, I might wake up and I'm like meditating, and the next minute I'm putting on like some, <laughs> I don't know, some like rap music. So it's completely, I've just come out of one state and I'm in a whole different one. That's just me as a person, I'm always changing. I like going to the bougie areas, but then I'll go to the hood. So it's like, I think that's just me as a person. I, you never really know what you're going to get. I'm always like changing. I don't like being the same. I always like to learn. So I'd say that's, that's who I am. And yeah, I think you can see that through my visuals because I'm always trying something different. I always want to be different with my stuff. And uh, do you think there's anything that you haven't tried yet um, videoing that you would like to try? Yeah, there's loads of things. I still feel like I'm like a baby in this. Cause directing I've only been doing since 
2016. So it's not that long, really. And there's so many visuals that I've seen. I'm like, oh, I would like to recreate that or I want to do something like this. Yeah, there's loads. I'm nowhere near. Like, this is like, I still feel like I'm in first gear. Like, there's like, I feel like I haven't done anything. And you're in it for the long run. So. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot of years, God willing, yeah. If there was anyone that you could choose to collaborate with, um, as in for the event or the mental you that things that you don't know, you Ooh. Say? have someone mentor like to mentor me. Yeah. Hmm. Oh damn, who would it be? Who would it be? I think for someone to mentor me, I would have a director called Ava because I feel like she, yeah, I love her work. I, I would have her, yeah, as a director, I think, yeah, she would be perfect. And also because she's a businesswoman as well. And that's how I look at myself. Even though I'm a creative, I have that business side of me. I started my production company last year, so, yeah, I'm constantly like a split between a creative and an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. which I love. I wouldn't change it. Yeah. Is it one to prefer or just? Depends on the day. Mm -hmm. Depends on the mood. But I think I'm more the entrepreneur side of me. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I've got this really creative side. And a lot of creatives, they don't like, you know, like I remember talking to my accountant the other day and I was like, I love all of this, like all the numbers and learning all this stuff. And she was like, Creatives don't even like, they never s talk to me like this. They will get their their letters sent to her so that they don't have to deal with it. And I'm like, no, I want to know everything. Mm. So I don't know, that's just, I've always been like that from a kid. Always been like, liking the idea of business and stuff, but I just never channeled it. Cause I always thought you've got to focus on one thing and master it. Then everything else will come after that. So that's why I just focused on the creative side of me and just worked at mastering these skill sets. And now I can channel the business side of me into it. Mm -hmm. And would you say you're uh, family more creatives or entrepreneurs or both? I would definitely say creatives actually, now that I think about it. My, gran my granddad, he used to work, no, my granddad used to um, play drums in a band. Um, my mum and my nan, they're really creative. Like my mum was always making clothes and stuff. My nan, she can like sew clothes from like a pattern. Like she can make anything. Yeah, so we're actually quite a creative family, but I've never thought about it. Mm. Yeah, but no that? one's an entrepreneur, no one. No. So they don't <laughs> understand it. They're like, you're always tired. I'm like, if you lot knew what I do on a day to day, <laughs> they don't get it. Do you think that creativity influenced you to be creative also? Yeah, I think I think it did. Yeah. But I don't feel like my mum and my nan, they've got like they could come in here and just recreate the whole room. Whereas I just I don't know, I don't have that capacity. I'd rather just be like, I know what I want, but then to place things, it never looks right to me. Whereas they just know how to dress something. I don't have that. So, which is weird, because I thought that I would have adapted it from them, but I don't. Well, you've got yeah. other skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got other skills. I know how to shoot it and make it look pretty, but just place it for me. Yeah, so I guess we're like yin and yang in that way. So you walked into uh, the production agency of the street. Um, yeah. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so I had been emailing this production company for like a year, mm. and I was like, I want to get in turn with them. Um, and no one replied to me. And I was thinking, what's going on? And then one day I was with a friend in Brick Lane and I remember telling them story. And I was like, I'm just gonna go in there now. Cause I looked up their address. I was like, oh, their office is down the road. I'm just gonna, gonna go there. So I just walked in and just asked for an internship. They were like, yeah, cool. Send your work to this email. We'll get back to you. So I went home, sent all my work over to them. And then two weeks later, I started my internship and I stayed with them for about, I'd say about a year and a half. And they're who uh, actually put me forward for pretty, for pretty bad. They're who, what, wait, I can't even speak, wait. They are who put me forward for H&M. Uh, so they're actually the reason that I got the H&M job. 
but they assisted me um, as a director and built me up uh, and just taught me things that I didn't know. Cause I would literally just came in off of the street. <laughs> like, yeah, I self shoot, I do this. Um, but I had no idea about the production side of it to that level. I did production before, but they were like big league. So they taught me like those are different things. And I got to go on set and they were doing like commercials and stuff. So I got to learn so much um, and connect with other directors on their roster, which was really interesting. Um, so yeah, I just went and took it basically. And what do you think are like, the biggest lessons you learned from that experience? Um, I had this idea that if I like signed to an agency, that was it, like I've made it. But then when I actually made it onto the website and you know, I was, my name was next to one of my other favorite directors whose blueprint I actually followed that got me to Pretty Bird's office. Um, I realized that I was still in the same position and I thought, oh, this is weird. Cause I thought now that I'm on their website, everything's just gonna come to me. I'm gonna get all these commercials and these music videos, but I was still in the same position because I was still the same director. It's just my name had been put somewhere where people could find me if they knew where to look, but no one knew who I was. So no one was looking for me. So that harsh reality of, oh, I thought this was gonna be it. And it wasn't, it was like, oh, this is like, <laughs> this is like gear one maybe, but now you have to go and make a name for yourself so that people can find you. Um, so that was like confusing at the time because I thought, oh yeah, this is it. Everything's gonna happen now. And then nothing happened. And I was like, so what do I do? Um, and it was a bit disheartening at first, but then I just realized it doesn't really matter who you're with. You still gotta go and do the work yourself because you can only represent yourself. Um, I feel like you only represent, rep I feel like you can only represent yourself um, the best. No one else can really do that for you. You've got to do the work and give them something to go and represent you by. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was just like going around in circles then. <laughs> do you think that pushed you harder? Oh, 100%. I took it personal. I was like, what? <laughs> Why is no one asking for me? I didn't understand, especially after I did the H&M campaign. I thought that was it. I was like, what? I've done something with H&M. This is it. I'm gonna get commercial after commercial and no one cared. I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. So I kind of just went back to basics and went back to, um, I think I just went back to, yeah, working with artists, but working on creating like a signature style in a way and trying different things, finding my team. That was the main thing I did found a team that I worked with really well. Um, and then from there just kept going. And then I started to really build my name. I thought I'm gonna build my name in my community so that everyone will know me. So when you think of UK rap music, you're gonna think of Ashley as a director. Um, and then I went and did that. That's what I dedicated like the whole of 2019. That was my only goal. That's all I cared about. I want everyone to keep seeing my name so much that they think that she doesn't sleep. And someone messaged me that, they was like, do you even sleep? Cause like your name is always on a new video. When I saw that, I was like, yeah, I've completed my goal. I'm good. <laughs> so then I made a new goal for myself. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think the main thing that you want people to know about you? The main thing I want people to know about me? Yeah. Oh, what just in like general? In general, in your career. Mm. What do I want people to know? I'm not sure. You guys are asking me good questions, you know, you're making me think. What do I want people to know about me? Yeah, what's my legacy? I guess, I think the main thing I want people to know is that I'm not scared to help other people. I feel like a lot of people, especially, I think it's a bit of a British thing as well. It's like, they're scared of collaboration. Or oh, what if I bring this person in and they go further than me? Whereas I'm like, if I bring this person and they go further than me, then it's like, cool, we're both gonna win because they might be in a position that I might need help from later on in life and they're already there. 
So I think that's one thing that I would like people to know about me. I'm not scared to help people from mentoring. You can tell that because my mentees, I, any opportunity I can bring, I, I try to get them onto everything, even to other directors. And if they go off with that director and they, they blow up with that director, that's perfect. I love that. Maybe one day me and that, that mentee can do a shoot together because we're just going to help each other's platforms. You know, collaboration is key. So I'd say that. Mm. Yeah. I know that the people that you're um, mentoring, you doing during lockdown, so it's obviously on Zoom. Uh, now, would you say that you would have more of a chance to like meet in person? Do more yeah. Or yeah, I had a lot of them on my shoots. Um, I actually had a mentoring session in real life the other day. And it was so weird because we sat down and I was just like, I can't believe I've never met you before. It's so weird, but I have, you know, it just, it was weird. We haven't physically met before, but I just felt so comfortable. Um, but yeah, no, I love bringing them on set. Uh, now it's getting to the point where they have their own projects together. So a lot of them are meeting each other now and going and creating stuff together, which I love to see. Mm. That's beautiful, yeah. What would you tell your younger self? Mm. What would I tell my younger self? Um, I don't know, what would I tell her? I would tell her to, I would tell her to dream bigger. Yeah, I would say dream bigger. Cause I thought I used to dream big, but now I feel like oh, I could have, I could have dreamed bigger um, and stay focused. That's one, yeah, those two things more focused. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, but you, you know, you stayed focused now, but you could always be a bit better. I'm quite hard on myself. So, yeah. Do you think um, your dreams like change completely from when you were younger? Or do you think it's like, mm. it's just a more extreme version of you? <laughs> <laughs> no, they have changed. I feel like they're less material. So when I was younger, I wanted the massive house and like 20 cars. I love cars, but now it's like, I just want a couple cars. I don't really want a big house, I want a farm. You know, like stuff like that, it's just changed a bit. Um, but that's just me as a person. Like as I've grown, I've started to like appreciate different things. And I think once you become, once you start to get certain things, you realize that it's not really that big, that much of a big deal, like lifestyle stuff. You just get used to it. It's just normal now. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, my goals are pretty much the same. Yeah, even when I look back at like what I used to write, it's the same stuff, like direct videos for this type of artist or, you know, be known for this. I think now it's more working on myself as a brand. Before I used to, shy away and want to be behind the camera because I was just shy. Now I'm more confident as a woman and I don't mind being an example because I know that someone needs to be it. There's not many, there's hardly any girls that are in what I do, especially from London, um, from my background. So yeah, I'm willing to just take that position. And what advice would you give um, people that are aspiring to be in your position? I just got to work hard, literally. Work hard, be consistent, put yourself out there. Because when I was younger, I didn't used to put myself out there that much. I was, I was too shy. Um, but it's just staying consistent, repeating the same day over and over again, Get build up your confidence, build up your experience, uh, collaborate with people, and book a session with me. <laughs> and I'll give you all the game. And as a last question, what, what's your thoughts on personal development and the mindset it takes you to succeed? Oh, I'm all about this. I love it. Uh, when it comes to personal development, I think that's so important. I think it's everything, to be honest. Because if you, if you don't have the mindset for the goals that you want to achieve, it's like you're not going to get there. You're not gonna be able to, you might get something, but are you gonna be able to attain it for a long time? So that's why when I talk to my mentees, I am very big on getting their mindset ready for what they want. 
I had one of my mentees co-direct a video with me the other day. And um, it was such a sad moment because I knew what this moment was because I remember when I went through it. But like when she realized that the other side didn't really respect her as a director and like wasn't listening to her ideas. And I said to her, you have to go through this because you've got to get thicker skin, you know? Because she just thought, oh, you know, direct. She'd seen me direct and she'd come on some really good projects of mine where I was very free to do what I wanted. And she thought that every shoot was like that. And I said, no, that's not the reality. Sometimes you have shoots where the client's very specific. So you have to kind of just work towards what they want. So, you know, moments like that, have to, they, they have to prepare you for what you're actually asking for because you say you want to direct, but can you deal with when you have a client like that? Because you're going to have some like that. So you have to get your mind ready for that. You have to learn not to take things personal. You have to learn not to like hold grudges. And as creatives, we get very, um, we get very attached emotionally to projects. And that's one thing that I had to learn early, learn to not be attached to it. Someone's paying you to deliver a service. So if they don't, if they don't want it as creative as you do, you can't get upset by that because you don't pay for it. So I always teach my mentees, just remember sometimes you have to just do something because someone's paid you to do it. But then what you do is when you get paid from that, you save that money and then you go and create the art that you want to make. And then you can get into it and attach because you're funding it. So it's always going to come out how you want. So that's something that I have to teach. And again, that's mindset because you have to learn to detach your emotions. And yeah, it's really important. Really, really important. Yeah. Did that answer the full question? Yeah. Okay, perfect. cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for everything. No worries. It's been lovely meeting you and hearing your story. Very interesting. I'm sure you're doing very well in life. Thank you. Nice to meet you too.